welcome to my channel. I'm Ruffle and today I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial about the easiest way in GIMP how you can combine or blend two pictures together. So let's get started and jump right into it. At first for sure we have to open our files. Uh, for this tutorial I've prepared a picture of a beach and another one of one of my favorite actors Keanu Reeves. And uh, make sure that you open your files as layers. Select your pics and click open to continue. If the wrong picture is at top right now, hold your left mouse button and drag to switch around. Once you've opened both pictures, select the picture that you're going to cut out by clicking it with your left mouse button. Then you can directly click it with your right mouse button. This kind of little menu will open and then make sure, and this is really important, to click add alpha channel because if you don't do so, you won't be able to invert your selection later in the process. Alright, uh, next thing to do is to select your foreground select tool in this kind of tool menu and start setting these yellow points around the part of the picture that you want to keep. And you can set these yellow points by clicking with your left mouse button. If you make a mistake in that process, it's no problem. Just hold your left mouse button when you click the point that you want to correct and drag it to the right place. This might also be the right time to mention a quick tip. You can zoom in and zoom out by holding control on your keyboard and rolling your mouse wheel. If you only roll your mouse wheel, it'll change your vertical position and if you hold shift on your keyboard and then roll your mouse wheel, it'll change your horizontal position. Once you've completed your selection, just hit enter on your keyboard. Now don't worry if your picture doesn't colorize in red, that's just my settings because I think red separates foreground and background pretty nicely in this case. What you have to do now is to redraw your foreground or let's say the part of the picture that you want to keep. You do this by holding your left mouse button and dragging that kind of circle shape tool along. You might have already recognized that GIMP automatically marked the background, which we'll delete later in a darker color. If you want to change the size of the current tool, just left click your tool options and change the parameter stroke width. When you think you're ready, just hit enter again. Now GIMP knows what you want to have as foreground and background and gives you the chance to work out your details a bit better. So you don't have to do this if you think you're right to go, but my experience tells me that in 90% of the cases I tend to improve my foreground selection. So I do in this case. The tool still works the same way. Don't worry if you see mistakes like I see one um, at the top of Keanu's head, we can work on that later. When you are happy with your detailed selection, just hit select in the top right of your screen. Next step is to click select in the top left of your screen, then click invert and then hit delete on your keyboard.
Just select the tool in your tool menu. Then go ahead and set these yellow points around the area you want to delete by clicking your left mouse button. To correct any point just hold the left mouse button and drag. When you think your selection is ready to go, just hit delete on your keyboard. Afterwards click select and none. The last step is to select the move tool in your tool menu. To bring your selected layer in the right position, just hold your left mouse button and drag it. Alright, I hope you are happy with your work. To save your work, click File, Save As, name your file and select the folder to save it. Once you've done that, just click Save. To export your new image, click File, Export As, name your image and select the folder to save it. You can change the format of your new picture by clicking Select File Type by extension and then you'll see that GIMP gives you many many options in terms of format. I believe the standard selection is JPEG, but I tend to use PNG format nearly every time, because JPEG files often are too big to be uploaded on YouTube, for example if I created a thumbnail but for sure, that's up to you. Once you've chosen the format, just click export. And that's the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed it and hope it was a useful tutorial in your case. If you still have any questions, put that in the comment section and you'll get an answer from me just in time. If you are new to my channel, please check out the video you see on screen right now. It's a nice opportunity to get to know Ruffle and see what he usually does. Or even subscribe directly for mainly 2D animation content with him, but also more free software tutorials like GIMP, Shotcut or Blender tutorials. Also if you have video ideas or any wishes or critique, just let me know in the comments. Have a good day and peace.